If I start reading, it's because I'm nervous. Um, so if you don't know, I am the librarian at the elementary school. So it's very easy for me to talk when I get in front of a lot of my kids that are here tonight. So it's a little bit harder now. Um, I, as well as Miss Marsha, when Brother Tom called a few weeks ago and said, would you do this? I was like, Ugh. I was actually walking in El Matate with my parents and I said, there's no way, you know, I don't have a story. There's no way I'm gonna do this. And I shared with Brother Tom that day at school, we have these huge library, in the library we have these huge dictionaries in the back. And my kindergartners, they would always come in and when they come in, they like to go back there and I said, um, guys, you need to quiet down in the back. And they said, Miss Cribs, we're just reading the Bible. And I was like, okay, you can go ahead and be loud then. <laughs> it's okay. So, and that's, so I thought, you know what? The Lord is trying to tell me something that I need to, to go ahead and share my story. So, here goes. Um, I was also worried about not, about giving my testimony because I share with Brother Tom, I, I didn't have this miraculous story to tell, but... I was talking with Bobby about it one night, and I said, but you know what? I have a story, so, so that's worth sharing. So here goes. Um, when I grew up, I always considered myself a Christian. I prayed every time I needed something. I prayed before basketball games. I prayed um, just whenever I needed something. And I never really prayed on a consistent basis. A couple of weeks ago, during one of Brother Tom's sermons, he defined a weak-spirited Christian, and that was myself. During his sermon, I thought, that's exactly what I was. I only prayed when I needed something. So, um, I had a plan. Even though I was this weak-spirited Christian, I still had a plan. <laughs> I planned on graduating high school. I wanted to go on to college on a basketball scholarship because... I didn't want my parents to have the burden. They'd given me so much. And I didn't want to burden them with having to put me through college. So after college, my next plan was I'm going to graduate. I'm going to get married. I'm going to start a family. Everything's going to be perfect. So that's what I thought. Um, I had a plan. I had a timeline. And it had to be just so. So graduated. I got a scholarship. I went on to play basketball. And I sowed many wild oats, and I continued to be that weak-spirited Christian. My last semester of college, I thought, everything's going accordingly. I'm about to graduate. Now, married, job, you know, all, all the things to follow. Um, my last semester of college, that's when everything began to unravel. I was about to graduate, but I also thought I was about to get married to the person who I thought I was supposed to be married to. But come to find out, that was not God's plan. I was just, that was not part of his plan. He had a much different plan for me. So during that time, I was very lost and very hurt, and I could not figure out why God was doing this. Why, you know, just like many people question why God does things in their life. Um, so I began trying to figure things out. My family was hundreds of miles away. I went to school in Troy, Alabama. Um, they were here, and they could hear the pain and the frustration and hurt in my life, but they couldn't help me. They, you know, only over the phone. Um, then we have, to kind of retrack a little bit, there was this girl. Her name was Jennifer. She was from Omaha, Nebraska. And she was... Um, like family to the basketball team, we won Thanksgiving. The only Thanksgiving I will ever miss was while I was playing basketball at Nebraska University. That's who we were playing against. We had one fan, and that was her in the stands. So you can imagine <laughs> this huge gym filled with everyone and then only one person cheering for us. But this one girl, Jennifer, she was brought into my life for a reason. And Every week, she would have a Bible study group in our dorm room, and I would always have an excuse not to go. I've got to do this, we have practice, we have weights, we have, you know, always an excuse not to go. 
But this time, her invitation seemed like that was the place that I needed to be. So I went to the Bible study group that Jennifer led, and I began going every week, every week. And every time we studied the Bible, I felt more confident and more complete. And now I felt like my life was going the way that it was supposed to be going. It was just... I when we were in our groups and we would talk about the Bible, I felt like not my life wasn't going just the way I was planning for it to go, but my walk with Jesus became better. We began talking, Jennifer and I started talking. Every single night we, I would go back to my room and it's like I could not get enough of reading his word. I wanted, I always wanted more. So, one night after our Bible study group, Jennifer drew this simple picture. She drew a picture of God on one mountain and me standing the opposite mountain atop the same, uh, an opposite mountain. And she said, you know, you have to build a bridge to get to God to have eternal life. So, I thought, oh my gosh, th duh, that's exactly what I need to do. And that's what I, my process had started doing. So that night I went back to my room very quickly and I prayed and I thought, I know where I'm supposed to be. I know that it's my time to turn my life over to Jesus. So I went back up to the room and I said, you know, there were some other girls still hanging around after we had our Bible study. So went back up to her room and I said, I'm ready. I'm ready. It's, it's time. I knew in my heart that it was time. So we sat in a circle and we prayed. And from that night forward, that night forward, I was no longer asking God what he could do for me, but what I could do for you. So it was the first time in a very long time that I could, um, I never felt alone after that. I felt like even though my parents were here, I was, someone was still there with me. I was never alone anymore. I felt like I could conquer anything, anything that was thrown my way, I could, I could conquer because my relationship with God was also growing. Um, as my door to my weak spirited Christian life closed, God opened so, so many more, oh, oh, so many more doors. Um, the first being I had reunited with, reunited with my best friend and also my boyfriend of my freshman year and who became my husband. Um, I was hired as a fourth grade teacher where he lived, um, so that always helped. And then God blessed us with a beautiful baby boy, Baron, who is, well, soon to be eight. And when Baron was born, our faith was tested again because Baron had a knee infection that, um, at a week and a half, that required him to have knee surgery. And even though it was a really tough time and we were in the hospital for 15 days, we still knew that God was in control. And now Baron, if you all know Baron, he is almost eight and nonstop. Amen. <laughs> um, next, Bobby and I, we moved to back to Dunlap where we wanted to raise our family and also so I could be closer to the two of the greatest people I know, which is my mom and my dad. And then God blessed us with a second baby boy, which is Colton, who is also nonstop. <laughs> so the one thing of turning my life over to God has... God has blessed me immensely with my family, my husband, and my boys, my mom and dad, and of course my brother and sister-in-law, nieces and nephews, and Bobby's parents. So that's it. Thank, Thank you. you. So much. Good job.